Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Tuba People TV, where we talk about Arnold Jacobs all of the time. Puddles is out in the uh, in the uh, forest here in the the uh, garden area, uh, but uh, we are here in uh, right right outside of Florence, in Fiesole. Yeah, in Fiesole, and uh, we're here. So happy to be here with Luca Benucci. Uh, Luca is the uh, principal horn of the Orchestra del Maggio. Fiorentino. Yes. Boy, that was a mouthful for me. Ma Orchestra del Maggio Musicale Fiorentino. There we it's go. It's pretty long. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And also the founder and artistic director of the Italian Brass Week. Yes. And many other things. Yeah, many other things, but uh, it's enough. It's enough, <laughs> okay. And along the way, you had some studies with Arnold Jacobs. Yes. Uh, uh, I was studying with him in Chicago, uh, private lessons in the Fine Art Building, and um, was a uh, I mean, changed my life because, as you know, Jacobs is not only a teacher, he's a psychologue, and uh, he gave me the, the right to follow the, the sound, to, to look for the sound, to, to love the sound, and, uh, and the music, mm -hmm. and the bel canto. I remember, he said, you are Italian, what about Pavarotti? And I said, yes, it's true. Sing like Pavarotti with his voice, a yeah. really low voice. Yeah. And uh, so I understood that um, most of the playing is related with the canto. That's why I insist with my students to, of course, to use the breathing device, but not only, just to, to develop uh, the, the, the idea of singing inside the mind and singing in, into the instrument. So basically, so it sounds like from that initial lesson, you, maybe you went in there with more of the the physical uh, way of approach and less of the yeah. singing way. But he tried to get you to. Okay, I was studying in that period with Dale Clevenger. Okay. And Dale Clevenger said to me, "I think you need to go and have a lesson with uh, with Arnold Jacobs." Hmm. So it takes a long time to have one, but I was waiting at least two or three months because he was fully booked. And, uh, and after, I remember it was Saturday morning, because I think, he, I remember he was teaching only two, two, I, two times a week. So Sunday morning, I went there and uh, I started to play and uh, he stopped me and said, okay, let's work on breathing. So we start to work on breathing. We start to, to, to he made me understand that I was not buzzing enough. So I explained that I was changing my ambition with Dale. But he, he said, no problem, just play a few melodic things. And I remember the first lesson, it was, I played uh, for the staccato, Jingle Bell, and uh, of Sole Mio for the Lyrical. just simple, uh -huh. simple uh, songs. And I was asking me, my God, I played of Sole Mio and Jingle Bells. What, that, what, what it means, you know? And, and, and then later I understood that there was simple things not from the whole world, just working on the, you know, on the melodies or something very, very easy to understand and not to have stress on playing. So that was, I think, his magical things was uh, to use simple things to make you understand how to sound great without any stress. Mm -hmm. yeah. Basically, upon that. of course, every single time he was, uh, he was giving me a lesson, it was, uh, you know, was so so magic because uh, he can find a solution for any single problem that you have. Of course, he had thousands of students and major students, so he could easily uh, find any solution. Like, uh, okay, you are not breathing correctly, the, the timing is not correct, and I remember we after a while because I was flying over in Chicago to have lesson for 10 years. So when I was already principal horn in Germany in the 95, I went there and we started to talk about colors because my level of playing was completely different from when I was there in 87. So he started to talk about colors, how to use vowels and mix vowels and on the tonality you should have uh, the, this kind of color because uh, the, the colors is belongs to the tonality and the emotions. What kind of emotions? So the theater. So it was, a, 
you know, normally the the uh, the, the, the the lessons should be one hour. Mm -hmm. They they used to be one hours. When we start to talk about this, he forgot time. And uh, they, they, they was going for one hour and a half, and the people was knocking. <laughs> it was really, really nice. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So getting back to that first uh, that first lesson with Jacobs, and he had you uh, just playing on the mouthpiece, simple simple melodies, jingle bells, and uh, also La Mio. And mm -hmm. what uh, what did you what was the practical impact of that on your? Okay, the practical impact. Okay. By the way, I was already buzzing before going to Chicago, but uh, by nature, nobody told me ever to buzz. I had this instinct to do it. And I remember also, I was meeting people from Swiss and from Germany, they were saying, no, 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 don't do that. Right. Then I soon arrived in the lesson of Jacobs, first thing is like, this is your instrument, the mouthpiece. Uh -huh. Develop to play the, this, and you will develop, of course, the intonation in your in your mind, and the muscles will be related, and then you will discover how to go half up and down without needing to have the instrument that does it. The instrument is only a piece of brass. Mm -hmm. So, as soon as I do that, I start to practice every day, a lot with the blue machine, the, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the blue machine, one, yeah. yeah and of course with the ring, and of course with the balloon, and uh, with all this equipment that he was uh, suggesting to buy. Mm -hmm. It was a suggestion, but a good suggestion. And I said to the students, look, it's not a suggestion, it's something that you need to have it. It's an equipment that will save your life, and that will give you the right to play well. Mm -hmm. the, other, the, other, the other side of the coin is that uh, you cannot use it, but you will never know the, the truth of air, sure. the truth of blowing freely inside the instrument, and the muscles will work in different way. I normally don't talk about muscles. In my new book, I will, in the armature and muscles, I will put one empty page. Okay, bravo, bravo. Just because uh, I don't want to talk about that, and uh, there is many, many exercises that you can train your muscles, mm -hmm. But you don't need to know that that is for that. We know that if you're using um, the Clark or the calling for trumpet or the Arban, of course you will have lots of technique and uh, you will develop this. But what, what is very important is how to use the gasoline for the Ferrari. You remember, mm -hmm. he was telling, okay, you have a Ferrari, mm -hmm. but you don't put gasoline in. And uh, you know, first, and he said, you are so big man. You need to have this and this and this in order to play this long phrase. Mm -hmm. I remember I prepared many, many competitions and I won many competitions and Jacobs was really happy about my play. And then, unluckily, he wasn't, he, wasn't, uh, he wasn't there when I went to the finals in Chicago and we had a party uh, when, because uh, I played with the Scala Orchestra in Chicago in, and uh, this was 2007. And he was there, but he invited me to the party. I was there, many, many, many people. And uh, for me, it was like, oh my God, Jacob. And I'm in the party for Arnold Jacobs. You know, you cannot, when you are a student, you would, I would never imagine that I would be there or playing with the Chicago later on in the 2007. That was amazing for me, you know. And uh, when you are a student, you think, oh my God, what's going to happen? Right. But if you follow, I, I always say, you know, for me it's like God. I have three or four gods. And a polytheista. I have Mahler, mm -hmm. I have Bach, I have Jacobs, mm -hmm. and I have Mozart. Mm -hmm. So I put Jacobs in the middle of three big composers. Yeah. Because he composed in his own way a, a way to describe in a simple way even if this is complicated because it's related with the body, with the mind. And uh, later on, when I was uh, invited in Indiana University to teach, I start to study and to, to take care of the potential of the mind. Also to help uh, people and myself. And uh, as you know, we, we just use 5% of the potential of our mind. Mm -hmm. 
And um, if we use this creative part and the logical part and um, we put it in music, you can really find uh, the to, you, you, you will find how to bypass the problems of the instrument. The instrument, I, I, I was saying this before, is just a piece of brass. Mm -hmm. I play trumpet, I play horn, I'm not able to play tuba because it's too big, yes. but um, I never really tried uh, seriously. Maybe, you know, you get used to bass, and I can play it all, uh, but I, I should practice a little bit more the tuba. Sure. I love you know, um, one of my teachers was also Roger Bobo. Roger right. Bobo was living here right. yeah. and was teaching here for many years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. He was living in Impronita, my village. And uh, just, uh, you know, one kilometer down from my house. So I was very lucky because uh, when, I, when I was in the middle of, uh, you know, starting just after Chicago, I met Roger Bobo. And it was kind of the same philosophy, but more on the solistic way. Mm -hmm. Bob um, Jacobs was exactly for the orchestra. Mm -hmm. He prepares you for the orchestra. He gives you the, the basement uh, to play well. Mm -hmm. Bobo was the step uh, to give me the freedom, really the real freedom, because he pick up the tuba and play Strauss mm -hmm. and play Carnaval de Venice, play everything, you know. Yep, absolutely. You know, and. Um, so these people together, you know, because um, it's, you know, it kind of a Jacobs drives you to find people. I mean, for me, it's like uh, not only an icon, but uh, it's like a father out there. Mm -hmm. Anytime I have um, some doubt, I just watch out and say, Arnold, what you would do? Yeah, okay. Okay. It's like talking to, still to him. And every master class I do all over the world, I thank him in public oh. because he gave me more than anybody else as a person, as a suggestions, as a, you know, yeah. you will do well. Yeah, I you will make it. Yeah. And it gives you the, the right to go back in the university and practice like, like never before, and then you wait. 15 days, you wait the lesson just to give him the right to tell you, okay, good. So it's, it was like a challenge. He puts you always in a, <coughs> make you understand, I remember clearly, to tell, he, he, he was telling me about the horn. You have a great teacher, the best. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about this and this and this. Mm -hmm. So together, Dale Clemenger and Arnold Jacobs together, it was for me it was uh, the best I could have in that period. Yeah. Then later on, of course, I want to discover different styles, and I went to. You know, I was working in Leipzig for four years at Principal Horn. So I met Stefan Dor, and I was. Uh, he said, "We are the same age. I, I don't want to teach you, but uh, we can exchange ideas." So I explained the stuff of Jacobs to him. Mm -hmm. So breathing, singing. Mm -hmm. Mm, like, like the mask, he was insisting for the singers, you know, you are a singer with a horn in your hands. And on the other hand, is um, he explained me the style of Berlin, style, German style, which is completely different from Chicago, from the United States. So it was a, a very, very good combination. Maestro, 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 maestro. No, no, prego. He's, he's my friend, he's taking, a, he's the art director of the school oh, from France. Maestro, come Luca, um, you had mentioned that Jacobs uh, said, here's the mouthpiece, that's your instrument. Um, in the last few years, there's been some discussion uh, about playing the mouthpiece. Um, I'm just wondering, we're here in Europe, what's, what's the, the European... Okay, there is many different uh, opinions, of course, and it's, uh, it's right to have different opinions. At the same time, uh, what Jack was used to say is to find for the best sound. It doesn't matter if you are buzzing or not. For my opinion, very important. Very important because 
uh, you learn how to use your real instrument, which is the mouthpiece. Your real instrument is your mind. And so you produce the sound inside your mind. After you have a clear idea of what you really want, so you go by imitation. Uh, you choose uh, the, the, the Chicago sound, the Dale, Dale Clevenger sound, or you choose Berlin sound, or you choose London sound, doesn't matter. You need to have a, a, a clear idea of what you want. You will discover it by, you know, you just make experiments. But if you don't have the, the, the right uh, the right elements, the right instruments to discover it, you will never find it. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, going to find truffles uh, in, a, in, in the beach. Mm -hmm. so you will never find them. So, my experience with the buzzing is, uh, is two, ex two aspects of the buzzing. One is uh, to, to blow freely and uh, to have the, because uh, if you work a lot with the bass, of course you develop also the, 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 the right ambition, but also the, the, the muscles that support the buzzing. If you are not working enough, of course you will never have this kind of sound, because there is many different sounds. So, also Jacobson used to say that you have uh, colors, and uh, you're working on colors. If you like these colors and this kind of uh, uh, butter sound, or a creamy sound. You need to do you need to do this kind of uh, things like breathing correctly, musically, and of course trying to produce the sound. And then the instrument will reflect your idea. Mm -hmm. You listen to the instrument, but you produce the sound before. There is many people that doesn't need to do that, mm -hmm. and uh, there is a bunch of soloists, the main soloists, that do not buzz at all. Lucky them. Because I, lucky them, because uh, I, I was, you know, when I was students and still now, if you see my, my, my bag, there is the blue machine and there is the ring. And, uh, you know, when I have some spare time, I buzz. And I buzz and I sing. And I use all the, the voice, uh, the, the singer's technique. Not only, not only the, the, the ear, not only the buzz, but uh, all the singer's technique to become like a tenor. Mm -hmm. You know, I have been very lucky because I work since 95 in Florence Opera with Zuri Meta and with the best singers in the world, including Pavarotti. So what you learn in Opera House, how to sing, the beauty of singing, the beauty. And uh, when you work with ma major uh, conductor, I remember last uh, Brahms second with Muti, he invited me in his Camerino, and uh, I was a kind of, a, what's going on? And um, Riccardo Muti said, Benucci, we have a problem. I said, oh my God. My wife loves your sound. No. You need to come to Chicago. And I said, oh, this is not a problem, Maestro. I was like, whoa, oh my God. So what really impressed the conductors and the audience is sound, the emotion that you give, the personality that you, you have, and the personality you can conquest the personality. If you have a, a good teacher, so I grew up with Clementer, so he's got enough personality to, to show how. And, and of course, uh, you need to be very warm, nice inside, like Jacobs. Mm -hmm. He was a nice man. Like, like a grandfather, like yeah. a father for everyone. And uh, buzzing, for me, is the most important. I buzz all, the, all through the concerts. Mm -hmm. The old concerto, with the blue machine, with the ring, with the mouthpiece. Now, now there is another very good um, toy. It's called Upsound. The Pacho Flores, in, in, yeah, you have it? Pacho Flores um, from uh, Venezuela, but he's living in Spain. He's a very, very great, great solace, trumpet solace. And uh, he invented that uh, because it's very, very smart. Mm -hmm. Because I was in Spain, explained to him, I mean, he's uh, already a top Deutsche gramophone mm -hmm. artist, but uh, very curious. So he said to me, Luca, can you please explain to me how you breathe, uh, why you sing? Uh, a very, very smart boy. I mean, 
he's 31 years old. So I said, oh, this, 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 this. And then he said, but look at, you know, this blue machine doesn't have any resistance. And I said, yes, but you know, you will have the resin as soon as you pick up the instrument, and you will have the resin from the instrument. So it's this basic, you know, large bore for tuba and, tub and trombones, probably is more or less the same. For trumpets and horns, you need to adjust later on. Mm. And I said, okay. After, I think, a year and a half, he called me and said, come in Valencia and try this. I went there, it was summer, and I said, wow. So, you focus with the buzz, but you have a resistance inside. Mm -hmm. So this resistance is the equivalent of the instrument. So when you buzz, if you blow too much, it doesn't play. If you doesn't blow uh, enough, it doesn't play either. And make beep, beep. Mm -hmm. So it's not the, because you know, they invent so many things. No pressing and blah, right. blah, blah. Right. No pressing. You can play Mahler without pre no pressing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's impossible. So I think everybody should find his own way of playing. But the best is uh, to follow great teachers. So it's obvious that uh, most of all generation went to Jacob Sustai mm -hmm. from the 70s to the 90s, mm -hmm. or even before that. And I saw a picture of Roger mm -hmm. with him, yeah. and with another uh, famous tuba player. Bell Bell, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, why everybody sh should go there? I met uh, people, flute player from New York Philharmonic when I was student there, mm -hmm. and I met, uh, I think, Joe Alessi one time, I mean, a lesson just after me. So, you can imagine that everybody was going there because, you know, he was, he had some, something's magic, but uh, lots of knowledge. And if you sit down just by how you sit, how you breathe, he would know what you would play. They mind, I just discovered that because, uh, you know, I'm very curious and very, uh, to, to develop the power of the mind. There is two things that changed my life. Of course, Jacob, Jacobs, and also to follow Oriental philosophy. Um, Krishnamurti, the philosopher, Indian philosopher, uh, Mehta suggests me to read books mm. uh, from him. And uh, what you do normally in, you know, in the society is uh, you go to work and you, you pay the bills and uh, you, tuck, tuck, tuck. you know you have so many things that doesn't make you free. The only things that will make you free, Krishnamurti, Krishnamurti said, is uh, to love and to put passion in what you do. It's the only way that you will be free to do it mm -hmm. without any restriction. Mm -hmm. So, anytime I suggest uh, how to use the power of the mind, uh, you need to have an, an analysis of your you know, personality, but all, all your hobbies. And uh, of course, uh, you have to have a kind of a screen of what you do daily, mm -hmm. and uh, when you when you have a clear picture of your habits and your uh, daily work, you can uh, just add few things that will develop some things in your brain. Like, okay, how creative I am? Um, how many times I go to watch Miro or Van Gogh during the year? This. People, these painters or sculptures will open one side of your mind that normally would be closed. So the, all the arts are related, but if you only play the horn, uh, you will be a very good horn player. Mm -hmm. So I suggest them to all my students to have a kind of a little box, like the box for art, visual arts, the box for sculpture, architecture, uh, cooking, and the, all the arts needs to be, all this little box needs to be fit with information that they will give to you. If I, if I tell my students, please, you, you're working on Bravel, please close your eyes, and this is coming the imagination, we were talking about the mind, yeah. please close your eyes and watch a Miro or uh, Van Gogh or some, some, some painters 
and I, I can I can name a, a painting like uh, uh, Mangiatore di Patate, the potatoes um, eater mm -hmm. from Van Gogh. Try to watch this. Otherwise, we go to Google and say, "Look, watch this," or "Watch that," Matisse or Chagall, and it is just open. And said, "Oh, Maestro, it's so beautiful. What the colors? Now find the colors and play this." And yeah, you know, normally I, I put all the dark, the, the, the plain in dark room, so they only use this sense. And I said, "Okay, now watch the pink." And the sound change. Mm -hmm. Watch the blue, the sound change. So we're working on this, and uh, this is what, in the, my last lessons with Jacobs, we was talking about tonality and colors. And this was in the 96, my last time in Chicago studying with him. And then he passed away two years after. And uh, yeah, we lost uh, the, 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 the biggest inspiration that musicians could have. Yeah. So I start to, to develop this, for me, because when I play in the orchestra, I need to have this kind of inspiration. But when I go there, you know, everything is now is coming by, by magic. Mm -hmm. I call it magic, but uh, you know, you you work to have this kind of magic. It's not something coming up like this. Right. And um, all my students, I invite them regularly to assist me or to play in the section when we have Mahler symphonies and Strauss. And they ask me how you can do that. I mean, you stop the time and said, I wish I would know because there is a magic sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because you interact with a conductor, you're working with 100 people, right. and that is the magic of the music. A lot of energy, you know. The energy is going on. I'm talking about energy. I'm not using only the Jacob stuff, but I'm very, very deep into yoga, into mm -hmm. oriental breathing. And that really makes the difference. When, they have, when the, my students tell me I'm a little nervous for, for the concert, I said, find a piece. Mm -hmm. So every morning when I start with teaching, this is the first exercise we do. Every morning. And this is also, you close your eyes and you have the you feel how the lungs, uh, the air goes in the lungs. Otherwise, if you just, I, I, I see so many students do it, and that's it. Right. And they feel kind of, a, oh, I breathe, yeah, one liter. Yeah. But, um, you know, you, you, you need to make them be in touch with the body. And if you close your eyes and concentrate on this breathing slowly, And you have enough air to play a very nice phrase. So the, the, the power of the mind is uh, to put, you know, uh, exclamation points to every single thing that you do. Yeah. Right. So you need to have lots of question marks when you play. But at the end, they need to become exclamation points. Yeah. So, uh, questions, questions, questions. Uh, I ask questions to myself, I ask questions to anyone. I was talking with Natalia Gutman, and uh, I sit down in her lesson, because I'm very curious, I still go to listen lessons. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, and uh, she was talking about, because she's not playing anymore so much, she's getting old, but uh, you know, she said a few phrases that opened my mind, and I went back and I started to play Bach, mm -hmm. like she was telling. Like, and I was like, wow. So there is people that inspire you. Doesn't matter if they are tuba player or horn player or cello player. Normally, cello player and horn are very, very similar the way they, we play and uh, and uh, tuba too because we play often uh, Bach and uh, and cello music. But um, the mind is something that. Um, really change your way of thinking. You need to use your mind to think correctly and to think positive. Yes. So, do you know anything about uh, the um, law of attraction? Uh, law of what? Uh, uh, the law of attraction. Not specifically by that. Okay. Day, yeah. Law of attraction. You attract 
what do you think? Ah. In the universe, you produce uh, particelle, mm -hmm. um, you produce you thinking, oh, I'm going to do this, and you're thinking about that, and you're producing this idea, you know, and uh, you're positive about that. The other way around, if you are, ah, I will never get this, you put yourself in a negative, uh, and you attract the negative. Right. So it's a, it's a law that uh, there is a million people that believe it, and uh, of course also the Buddhists uh, believe on this, you know, you think positive. You remember in the 80s and the 70s, uh, think positive, blah, 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 blah. Right. But it is a law that is not proved scientifically because nobody knows what's going on in the universe. It's so big. But uh, if you keep thinking positive, positive things will be, be, will be back. Yeah. It's a black and white, you know, yin and yang. Yeah, uh, look at that so amazing because I remember Jacob's uh, often saying, that sometimes you have to lie to yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you're feeling insecure about a, an upcoming passage or a performance or something, but you just have to go in there and say, I can do this, I'm the best. Wait till you hear me. Yeah. That sort of thing. This positive, this positive uh, vibe. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the point is that, um, you know, even if, uh, because when you're a student, you don't sound at the best, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, at the same time, uh, you have the hope, and uh, Jacobs used to give you the energy to go back and to study every day, every day, so many hours, to go back in his studio. And uh, I remember it was such a nice, I've been there recently, the final building was with going yeah. up, uh, yeah, with a very, yeah, yeah. very old elevator. Yeah. And the last time I was there, I was two horn players from Chicago Symphony taking care of his studio. They was uh, making a film. I was, I mean, I was very happy to find people from Chicago so right. taking care of his studio. And um, so, uh, what he gives you is the hope. Yep. And to watch uh, always in the positive way. You play a long tones, beautiful tone. Uh, this was already something magic. If uh, your sound didn't sound like that, stop and just. Uh, try to imagine. The imagination for him was the primary, yeah. uh, the primary, you use your imagination to build your own way of playing. So if I was not so confident, stop, buzz a bit, sing, because you connect the brain and the intonation, 100% is intonation, and the intonation in your brain gives all the nerves, all the bass, everything, all the, the breathing, and uh, you connect, and you have need to imagine that. But you only imagine is not enough. I always say to my students, sing properly. And even if they sing, there is few things that uh, uh, is curious, because uh, if you sing in the wrong way, you will have a beautiful sound. But if you sing with the right technique of a singer, you will have a project sound. Mm -hmm. If you are, and this is the step that uh, the interpretation. If you're, oh, it's okay. Oh, you put in dramatic. Yeah. And you, if you read allegro, la la, it is like adagio mesto. Lo, lo, lo. So your brain is connected with what you play. Yeah. And you say, okay, I want to give the people sentimental, which is tragic, Tchaikovsky 5, because it's a story of, uh, you know, the Tchaikovsky wrote this for the lover. And the lover in, the, in this period, I mean, in Russia, you could not have a gay lover. Right. So right. it's kind of a, I'm more than you. Yeah. And uh, if you know, you go into the story of the music inside, so you use your imagination, but also you read on the scores or you talk with the conductors, you, you tell stories. Muti, every, every big names, and uh, Askenazi also, I like to talk with Russian people because uh, they are full of stories. Yeah. They can tell you Rostropovich, the Chelis, uh, he told me about this uh, Tchaikovsky Five. So you put your own sentiments, you put your own playing, of course, and uh, you put your own energy. 
So, minds control everything. Yeah. And minds need to be, is, is, you know, it's not a computer, it's much better, but you need to be uh, in control of this magic computer. So you put information and you just, you know, you fix the information inside. I, I'm talking about when, what I'm doing with my students and not, not difficult things from the basement going up. Mm -hmm. And um, I call it pyramid. Mm -hmm. It's five years uh, plan. Okay. Two years of uh, working, mm -hmm. working, working and getting information, find out your way to play correctly. And then the third year, normally they start to audition, winning auditioning. Fourth year, normally they go abroad, Germany, England, and States, to have some new experience and uh, also to have, uh, not to, to cut the, the relation that they have with me. Otherwise, they are completely stuck with Luca. Mm -hmm. The fifth year, normally they get a big job. And this is uh, proved by all, all, all what they did in the, in the past. You know, I have students playing in France, in Austria, in Poland, in Germany, so, and of course, all, all over Italy. <coughs> and this is, they are very, 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 uh, they, they watch the name of Arno Jacobs. If you, if you, I used to have it, I don't know. I used to have the photo of Arnold Jacobs mm -hmm. in my wallet. No kidding. Photo of, it's like a, wow. a relative, you know, uh, of him, and the other side was Gustav Mahler. Okay. So they're talking together, you know. About that. I, 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 wow. I think if, wherever they are, yeah. they, might, they might talking about something nice. Yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Wow. For me, it has been like a, 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 a grandfather. Sure, yeah. And, uh, and more than that, an inspiration, life inspiration. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Okay, the um, Arnold Jacobs, of course, he had his own way of teaching. But what makes him unique is uh, that every single person uh, was different individual. I mean, different, uh, he needs different words mm -hmm. to arrive to the same point. So he used psychology for uh, to enter in your mind, to enter in your weak points. He discovered the weak points immediately, mm -hmm. and he said, "Okay, work on this and this and this." So after that, I discovered that uh, you know I started to teach, and um, probably I was not uh, able to give. Uh, I only give informations without any rules or maybe without understanding that people need different things. So I went and I got some cassette that I was recording uh, Jacobs in his lessons and I start to listen again, listen again. And um, sometimes he was telling Jacobs, he, he was telling me, you, you're very lucky, you will become a very good teacher. And I said, why? Because you are translating so many lessons without your instrument in the hands. Mm. So you are picking up the good things without being under stress. Mm. Interesting. So when I heard this uh, phrase again, I said, okay, probably he means that we have to practice without the instrument in the hands, with the mind, mm -hmm. watching the music, find the colors, find the, you know. So what I'm doing now, okay, I studied three years psychology for myself, but doesn't didn't work very, very much, but it worked very much with the students, because I can see immediately, and I hear from the plane, very much what's going on inside your mind. And if you are worried, if you are uh, shy, if you are arrogant, and uh, so I know how to work. Normally, people that want to play in an arrogant way, they don't have so much discipline. And so I suggest them, okay, you sound great, but I think you should have this and this and this. How to avoid toi toi, how to blow correctly, how to sing, how to make something special. So there is so many things, you know. The, remember, uh, Jacobs used to uh, talk about articulations, and uh, he didn't like to, to, to use the, the, uh, the words attack. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So he said, Luca, 
puts consonants and vowels together, can you imagine how many you can find? And so, another phrase from the tapes, mm -hmm. 30 years after, they're still working mm, 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 with, with, with the stereo of my father, because we don't use anymore this kind of cassette, you know, I remember? And uh, so I said, oh, wow, wow. So for a staccato, it should sound like a bell, I would use don, because sound like don, 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 don. Mm -hmm. For, so I just start with Dill, we did this together, and we found something like 125 different articulations. And oh. we were in, uh, in, uh, in Indiana, and he said, damn, I play all my career, maybe with 12, and we have so many different. Wow. Yeah, and that's, you know, to me and to him, open, we, we were like, wow. And that's a brainstorming that you can have with uh, great teachers, that, because they are open. You know? yeah. They are not, okay, use this, and that's it. Jacobs was like this, you know, you have this problem, then he, you remember, he used to watch under the, the tongue, and he used to say, hmm. He said to me, you will never go fast, because you have these two nerves too, too tight. I said, okay. But you can practice this and this and this, and use T and D, instead of ta and to, and you will go fast. Maybe you will have a little problems to play loud in the fast, but uh, for sure you will play Mozart and Baroque with no problem if you use D and D. So I start to practice D and D in the technique and then on the concerts, bingo. I was, yeah, he had a solution. And then, of course, I remember um, when, uh, when I went there in the 95 and I was already, you know, a, professional player. I played for him that I was I was planning to play from going from Germany to Florence and I had an audition with Zubimet and he was really proud and said, okay, play Mozart. Okay, just go to Dale and uh, fix this and this, but he will tell you, uh, now play Siegfriedo. And he said, are you sure you never have been playing properly? Because it's so easy for you, you see. <laughs> wow. And I said, yeah. no, Maestro, I never play trumpet. But once in a while, I play trumpet for fun. Ah, I said, ah. And then after that, I discovered that uh, the home player can play trumpet. And uh, you know, you you go up gradually, but uh, the horn will will sound like okay. It's much easier than than a trumpet. Yeah. So once in a while I play trumpet, my son played trumpet, I pick up the trumpet and I play and I enjoy. Of course I'm not a trumpet player, but uh, I enjoy, enjoy playing any, any music with any instrument, which, uh, which is the music that dictates what you're really looking for. Yeah. Yeah. And also the breathing is not, I mean, of course you need to have roots and of course you need to breathe and then, and this is technical. Mm -hmm. And then later, you understand that is the conductor that gives you the one, two, three, mm -hmm. and then is related also with the music. So I breathe in the music. I never, I never breathe. The, um, you know, uh, at the last minute. Yeah, yeah, at the last yeah. minute. So, right. and there is sometimes that I don't breathe. Do you have enough? I don't breathe. I say to my second horn, don't breathe. And uh, it works very well. Mm -hmm. the, the things that uh, when, you, when you are very focused on breathing and uh, have lots of air, lots of air, sometimes students get in trouble to have too much air. Mm -hmm. So, right. so I, I, I use this combination between the Jacob School, which is this school and uh, the virtuosismo school, for instance, Hungary and Czech people, they they almost not breathe. Mm -hmm. They're everywhere with the horn. Okay, the sound is not, you know, it's not big like a Chicago school or a German school, but they are big virtuoso. Mm -hmm. So I had students from Hungary, and I was teaching there, and I tried to pick up from players, from top players and students, 
what, how they play. I watch them, write down, and I ask them because I'm curious. I want to, and then I ask, of course, many people, professional player, how they can do that. So I, I, I if you see Nakarakov playing, mm -hmm. he's playing, mm -hmm. and he's going everywhere. Of course, he he will never play Malek five in the orchestra. He's a, a virtuoso. Same with Bitsuti. Bitsuti is a phenomenal musician and an artist and of course a virtuoso. But we never play we never play Malek five like Martina away in San Francisco. Yes. Mutti said you sound like Rubenstein? Yes. Wow. How about that? Yeah, because uh, you know, I was worried that in my rehearsal I miss a note. Mm -hmm. So he came to me and said, Look at Benucci. He said, uh, you sound like Rubinstein because Rubinstein wasn't perfect, but he makes one phrase that just inspire you. And maybe he missed one note, but who cares about that? Mm -hmm. So also that there are big tooth from big names that they, because many, many home players are very, very worried to miss notes. Right. What what really, I mean, my colleagues and many, many people doesn't understand how I can be very relaxed and play missing no notes and just play music. Okay, one is Krishnamurti. So it's the passion and the love that I put in the music. One is practicing every day to bypass the instrument. So how you bypass instruments? Easily, with a mouthpiece. Doesn't matter if people doesn't buzz, we buzz. Mm -hmm. So we do buzz and I tell everyone so this is big big vibration full of air <coughs> and you can have different kind of buzzing for instance Vitsuti told me to find the center and I studied two years his way of buzzing Buzz, the voice, and it changed a lot. You remember before it was like yeah. mm, 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 with no personality. So if I change instead of O, I use E, it will change. E, the tongue go up. E, so I have O here and here. E here. E it means E for you is I for us. So I breathe with, with O and I put E at, e at the end. So it's like a really French. So I use this kind of a, I'm talking in a Je parle français, mm -hmm. like, the, like the director. Uh, so every single language inf influences very much the play. Natürlich, ich kann ein bisschen Deutsch sprechen. So uh, when I think and I play German music, my 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 side, my my brain goes to the German speaking. Mm -hmm. When I of course I play opera italiana, parlo italiano. So it, to have pro Spanish or Japanese, you know why? Uh, Japanese has uh, sometimes not not all of them, but sometimes when I was teaching there, uh, they 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 playing kind of a da 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 a little square. You know what? Because the the voice and the language is syllabus. Watashi wa luka des ashime mashite. And the first things that I told to my sons is watashi wa nikolo des. Okay. And that watashi wa, they, they, they also play in ta ha ta ha 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 So it's becoming a twa twa, not twa twa twa. They don't know. Of course, if they add some singing, doesn't happen this to China. China, they sing beautiful, they, they love to sing. They are very similar to us, 
today in Latin. And uh, if you go there and say, please sing this, they know how to sing it. Yeah. So it's just curious. You travel around the world and then you find so many different uh, way of playing. Yeah. But there is only one beautiful way of playing and uh, aesthetical and of course respecting the, the, the music that you're playing and uh, put your own personality otherwise just copying 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 we are we are not trying to copy we are trying to do something different sure that's what really makes the different on playing you are original why <laughs> because you play in different way than any, anybody else right yeah, I, the, the, the big thing that I came away from Jacobs was that every note has this passion, every note has this yeah. interest, every note has this information, and, and uh, it's so true, and it just informs yeah. everything else. Yeah, and uh, when you, when, uh, you know, uh, I, I ask my students to play not long tones, quality tones. Yeah. And uh, to exactly. close, close their eyes, to concentrate on the beauty. How beauty is that? And uh, doesn't matter if you spend one hour on these pedals, but uh, you know these pedals, and the, you know you will discover how to blow without going like this, without having different, uh, you know, the pitch maybe does change, or the lips are not able to go for, you know, I can play this 60 second, over 60 second on one long tones, which is long. So well, you can especially for yeah for a tuba for sure, area, yeah. but uh, you can imagine that. Uh, how long the phrase? I remember many conductors wait when I play. I said, he's not playing, he doesn't play. <laughs> and so they come and say that, can you please tell me why you breathe? Because I would like to follow you. I said, Maestro, I'm not breathing. I said, how is it possible? I mean, I play this so many times, in many different orchestra, everybody play, breathe here and here. I said, Maestro, I breathe lots before, and I just go through the phrase without breathing. Wow. <laughs> and that, so you can do now I understand that this, there is of course sometimes that you have to breathe musically even if you have enough air mm -hmm. you need to do it right because it makes it makes makes a, the difference in the music but uh, if you have a, for instance there is many many long solo in the horn repertoire and um, even in the, in the in the solo repertoire if you have a, if you have the the chance to play a long phrase is, will be you know, unique. And the long phrase, you just playing it just if you know how to breathe correctly. <coughs> Most of the people doesn't doesn't breathe. And I travel all over the world. And it's not the point. You know, I was very surprised when I was in the States. Really surprised when I was in the States. And I was, uh, you know, giving master classes all over the Midwest, and they didn't know about the blue machine of Jacobs, and then they don't use this kind of device mm. anymore. And I was like, what? I mean, I flew over from Italy to discover this with Jacobs, and now there is not so many people that does use it. So. The, the point is that um, I suggest, you know, in South America, for instance, they don't have the money to buy it. Some people buy it. I was in Brazil in, uh, giving a master class, so they went to, I, will, I always send everyone to Fligrissen. Mm -hmm. Brian. Yeah, Brian Fligrissen, because he's selling this Winding Song. Uh, Windsongpress.com. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so most of the students uh, bought it there, but they're not, now they're different. They can do it in Italy, they can do it in Spain, everywhere you can buy this kind of device. But uh, just because, uh, you know, he's taking care of Jacob's memories and stuff, yeah. I try to help. Right. Yeah. That's great. Luke, I can't thank you enough. Uh, we've been working on uh, getting together for over a year, and um, it's just an honor and a pleasure to, it's my to, honor. to be with you, to meet you, and to hear your It's my honor to, to, to share with you the memories of our teacher, yeah. and uh, you know, I wish everyone would have the chance to meet him. Yeah, me too. Me too. I still dream about him. 
Yeah, still really dream about it. Yeah, wow. once in a while. Yeah, that's a nice. But uh, he would have. That's uh, a nice dream. It is a really good. Uh, I, I sound better in my dreams. Than, no, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jacobs would love for you to have this on behalf of me and this project. This. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, Tuba People TV. Wow, wow, that's nice. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you very much. And now back to you. <laughs> Just uh, yeah, that looks good. So if we start to migrate, just like you were doing, does that look okay, Emily, with the two of us? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So uh, Luca, that that first lesson. By the way, uh, we should explain. We're uh, we're kind of migrating around your school of music. Yeah, we are in Fiesole. This uh, school of music of Fiesole is the only private school in Italy. Yeah, and um, I feel very lucky to be here because uh, um, I mean, it's uh, first of all, it's near my city. I mean, it's uh, only five kilometers from Florence, and it's really, really well organized. It's, the system is like um, Anglo-Saxon, mm -hmm. like England, like United States. So. Uh, lots of great professors. I was here two days ago with Natalia Gutmann, oh, sure. and uh, many, many people, many, many uh, Paulini came here to teach. All the best uh, musicians from, not only from Italy, from all over the world, come here once a while to have give master classes, and and to teach permanently. My next season, my next uh, year of school, I will have as visiting professor the best horn players in the world, because they let me. Organize this, and I will have Radovan Blachowicz, Stefan Dor, Dirk Klavinger, uh, Andrei Casale, Marcus Masconiti, and many others. I mean, every month I will be the professor, but I have invited professor, sure. and the school understood that uh, if if I want to raise up the school and the uh, horn uh, team, I need to have this kind of project. Yeah, this and this building you said is about 500 years old. Yeah, yeah, we have some very nice. Uh, yeah. Paintings up there. Wow, well, very good. Very yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna. Questa è la famiglia. Stanno facendo un'intervista. Buongiorno. Prego. Gioia. Lei è una pianista, cornista e tubista. Ci siamo. Il nostro pianista. Bella bronzata. Io sono stato in Francia tutta l'estate. Sì. In Alsazia. Dove? In Alsazia. Sì. Ero a Colmar. Ah, bella, meraviglia, ah, è bella. Sì, ma io sono, sono tornato io, ho fatto una settimana di vacanze solo a casa mia sull'Atlantico. Su, eh? Giù, tra la. Io vi ha visto? Vicino, no, di, di fronte alla Rochelle, nell'isola di, di Re, it's a small island, il de Re. Il de Re. L'isola del Re sarebbe? Eh? L'isola del Re? L'isola del Re? Isola de Re, non si sa da dove è, Re come la nota di musica. Ah, come eh, come sembra. Come. No, 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 Fantastic. 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 Fantast
Tragedy. 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 Traged